Hey guys, I'm just finishing up my uh, gray market season one vacation. Two weeks have flown by. We're off to a new season. And guess what? This season, I'm going to give away $1,000 to a random person that likes, shares, and subscribes to our video every single episode. So cheers to season two. <laughs> So right before leaving for Ireland and London, I wanted to have a quick partners meeting. Decided to have a quick breakfast at my house. So we got together to discuss numbers. We did set certain goals. Wanted to give them an update where we are going into fourth quarter. All right, I got some good news. I got some bad news. There's bad news? Yes, I do have bad, I have, I do have bad news as well. We set a goal to go from 100 million in revenue to 300 million in revenue. Oh, the CEO is here. Hi. <laughs> captain. <laughs> the captain. Uh, Demi, do me a favor. Go like this and say, let's start the meeting. No? She's more polite than her daddy. Obviously. <laughs> With that said, if I simply take a monthly average, what we've done year to date, right now we're on track to do, not counting the Christmas season, which we're going into 120 million. We're gonna be at a 30% growth. That's the good news. The bad news is that I want more. And I think I have a way to achieve more. We went from being 80 to 85% wholesale to 15 to 20% retail. Right now, we're actually sitting at about a 50-50 mark. In the next quarter, we have an antique show in... Uh, end of October. End of October in New York. And then what do we have? And then, then there's going to be an IWJG show in November in Miami, which I think we should attend. Okay, so... Look, last, last show we were in Vegas was tremendous. You guys had four million in business. Listen, you don't expect that to continue like from show to show, but I think still we need to be there in November. Here's where I'm going to, with this. Sometime uh, towards the end of this quarter, I wanna try to go out and raise about $150 million. For us to go to that $300 million company, having the inventory level that we have, it, it, it will be feasible mm, maybe in five years. Would you say, Ivy? Yeah. As a simple example, I mean, if we have stuff in stock, it sells. So we had a lot of like the Rolex models that people are looking for, a bunch of subs, Hulks, Batman. Problem is, is they go in and they go out. Yeah. The, the yeah. Turn, our inventory yeah. number like doesn't change. It actually keeps going down a little bit. If we buy more and our inventory yeah, level keeps going down, cool. the more we okay. buy. Yeah, but they can't keep up with demand. That's a problem. By the end of the year. I mean, the it's end. an amazing problem to have. It really is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the more inventory we have, the more money we're going to make. And this is both on jewelry and, and watch out. Let me ask you a question. What if instead of just looking for more money, for example, we do a bigger push for consignment where we, we, are, we are, we are, we are, we are. And I have been doing a bigger push, but you're, I mean, you're only gonna get so far, but, but both you, from a revenue and the price is going to be no different. Time. My only issue with consignment is that, A, you're never gonna get that number significantly up and up. I wanna go to 75 million inventory. You're not out there consigning 50 million in inventory. It's not no, happening. I mean, that's, but the, the, the consignment is a great thing good. if you're at, if your capital is low, and you need to infuse that capital into better work. Okay, so Adrian, I mean, between me and the lamppost, uh, if we run a campaign, we'll consign another four or five million in inventory. Great. It's yeah, not going to make us a break. Yeah, yeah, but it's a free 5% margin. Correct. You know it's free. I mean? And you can use that other money to, to buy stuff with, with bigger upside. You know. Every campaign you see is sell us your stuff. Every single person's Instagram, every single you know, website, everybody, sell us. If we want to become the biggest watch buyers online, we just need to push that. What if we want to transition to that, that we want to become the biggest consigners to the public? Well, you know, both. From the we public. can do both. We can, but we'll never be the biggest in either. As far as gray market, season two, we just got to like really try to kick it up. I already have a few people that I can go visit immediately. So when I get back from London, we'll sit down, we'll talk, we'll schedule it out. If the cash infusion does come in, my plan is to open up yep. a physical destination location where people are going to want to travel to, Absolutely. meet, greet, sit down, hang out, buy watches, sell watches, etc. Absolutely. Makes perfect sense. We also gained a load of new blood in the, in, in the process this year. Like so many new clients. It's crazy. It's awesome. yep. And, the, and, the, and they that stay. Revolving that's door, what, and that's they, what it's all about. Just a revolving exactly. door. All right, look, I got to fly. I got to fly to London. Thank you very much. Avi, thank you Good for meeting. That's it. That's it. You can go now. Demi, great job. De Demi, Demi. Thank you. Job, Demi, tell him, tell him, meeting is done. I got to go to daycare. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned, I got to go to school.
arrived bright and early in Ireland, and Nico himself came to pick me up from the airport. Hey, probably. Yeah, hey, bro, it's two o'clock. I'm sitting there in a it's chair, two, bro. Two o'clock in the morning. How are you? How are you doing? Well. <laughs> what a mom. So I'll tell you one thing about Nico. His personality on YouTube is exactly the same as he is in person. He's just as crazy. He's just as funny. Problem is, I can only understand about half of what the f he was saying. What do I do? Ew. All, most of all our watches. Bless you. <laughs> that is a sexy man right there. <laughs> Only Nico, you gotta love him. So obviously we drove up to Belfast. He gave us a grand tour of his store, which is beautiful. This was an old bank. An old bank? Yeah. Oh, oh this is huge. <laughs> Sorry, sir. My, my bathroom is bigger than this. <laughs> This is perfect for hotel. Good vibe, isn't this it? This is perfect for hotel. It was your f***ing birthday, <laughs> like 20 days ago or something? 20 years ago. And I feel like you need to represent. No, a birdie told me you have really fat fingers, so here, try this one. What the f***? <laughs> what the f***? Would fit my dick like? <laughs> <laughs> this is pride of me. Oh, you just noticed that? I thought it was a Rolex crown. That's look. look. Closer. That is Class, bro. Thank you so much. That is Happy class. Birthday. Thank you. That is class. Look at that. See that painting? Who is that? You don't know who the fuck that is. That's the most important man in the watch world. Watch world? Who Ever. Is who is it? That's Hans Wilsdorf, your ball bag. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's him. Hans. Whatever. This is Hans. That's Hans. This is Hans. In the flesh. So that's the guy that found a Rolex, right? Right? Hans. What's his name? This is cool. I didn't realize this was uh, a freaking bank phone. Yeah, this was a bank phone. This, this is a bank phone. Yeah, this is really cool. Yeah, isn't it? So what are you going to use for displays at the show? These here, so the three around the lot. So you're going to use these, okay. How many watch, what's the watch count that you're taking now? Uh, we have 30 from you and we're taking 80. Okay, so that's good. That's good. Everything about this store is just pure. How would Nico say? Pure class. I absolutely love that the hotel itself is beautiful. It's the most expensive hotel in all of Belfast. It's a, it's a very beautiful building. Definitely a great vibe in that store and he showed us around the office. Before we headed in there, he stopped by a jeweler friend of his to have the ring resized. I think I overdid it with his size. I had somebody secretly measure his finger for me. And when I look at this ring, I'm like, this may very well be too big. I don't think his fingers are that fat. His ex-girlfriend messed up. She measured his finger while she was sleeping. I think she was measuring something else. <laughs> Honestly. That's pretty generous for you. <laughs> <laughs> You well? Nice how, was your, how was your flight? Uh, it's fast. It was like less than six hours, five hours. That's cool. Uh, okay. Nice. nice. Yeah. I'm so is, is that the conference room? Yes. This is where the meetings take place. Wow. Here. This here. This is proper. Here. Oh yeah. I'm That's gonna, a proper flight. I'm gonna get one of these soon. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll get one of these soon. But what happened? You got one, and then you got another one. Like, how did that? How did that? The first, the first one was on Pride Opinion. Oh, that's right. And this is Nico Leonard, and then we have a third channel. What the hell is this? What's that's Billy Billy? It's Chinese. We're, we're really big in China, actually. Nico, you're not big anywhere. You about yay big? Stop it. This is the games room. This is nice. This I like a lot. Ah, PlayStation. This is the famous rug. It is. That is sick. Oh wow, that is nice. This is the stadium I made my debut in. And as a surprise when I came back from Spain, they had it on the wall. That's pretty sick. Uh, this is cool too. Uh, so where do you sit when you shoot your video? There. There, so that's, that's the great screen. Uh, this is safe room. They're special, um, you know that, uh, what do you call that? Um, steam. Okay. You do all that in here, do you? Uh, so when you're in, as well, cameras with this, this, this literally blacks out the entire area for hours. So you cannot see. If you cannot see, you cannot steal. But this is, I mean, this is, this is good enough. Right. I mean, like, so in, in US, for insurance purposes, they rate, they rate the safes. Uh, you have to give it a UL rating. So my safe is rated something like UL 45, which means it takes a professional 
with the torch and the proper tools 45 minutes to open it if I was to lock myself out. Uh, so for a thief, it's nearly impossible. Even the air conditioning vents are done in this zigzag, so you can't fish anything uh, through. The walls lo lock in this way. There's six feet of concrete underneath, so it's it was a it was properly built bank. So what we what we have here is a police station. Five minutes, less than five, less than the police station. The station. police will be in my office in 45 seconds if I have yeah, exactly. This is great. This isn't a great advertisement for Belfast, <laughs> but this, this is like the high street. You can go up this way and go to City Hall, it's much nicer, you'll see much nicer buildings, but um, we get plenty of entertainment out here, seeing people get arrested and banged up and uh, fights. And awesome. It's, uh, it's an entertaining set of windows, that's for sure. So the point of my trip to Ireland, and obviously first and foremost is to see Nico, is to finally meet him in the flesh. We've been doing so much business together, talking so much on the phone, I literally see him on FaceTime 10 times a day, but to see him in the flesh, to shake his hands, give him a hug, that was number one. Number two, Nico is a fast growing business. He's only been doing this for a couple of years, and his business has grown to a level where he needed some help, he needed a little bit of advice. So the idea was just for me to sit down with him, his team, his COO, give them some pointers across all things. I don't mind sharing that information. Nico is a friend. And last but not least, guess what his office Wi-Fi password was? F-U-C-K, you blow. You would have that <laughs> password. <laughs> Only me. <laughs> I was looking at what you packed up in terms of like, um, you know, like gear and stuff. Like pens are great, the, the cloths are great, but you have to consider space. Where is that gonna be standing? If you put it on top of the showcase, it takes away from the watches. So Sales process, how are they gonna pay? America is cash, cash, cash. No, America is actually not cash, cash, cash. No? America is credit card, check, card. accounts payable, accounts receivables. We fucking hate cash because we can't do shit with it. No. Because, you know, you guys are more cash, cash, cash. One of, a lot of other things that I do is say, hey, guy buys a $10,000 watch, me a small deposit, $1,000, $2,000, go wire me the rest, I'll ship it out to you, right? Yeah. One simple rule, you never go broke making a small profit, right? You, we find a happy medium between retail and wholesale. If you're gonna only slowly grow your retail operation, what's not gonna end up happening is gonna be a slow, painful growth. If you plug in a little bit of wholesale in there, the wholesale has a lot of downsides. The downsides are the following. Agent inventory, and too much inventory, because to keep a wholesale, like if I gotta supply 15 Nikos, I need to have a lot of shit, right? Then you have bad debt expense. People go bad. Things don't go bad until they go bad, right? What do you mean? Meaning that, what the f am I going to do to you if you take that case today and just never call me again? Nothing. Nah, yeah, I would I'll sue you, all this. Yeah, I hope you would call down the shop and come for a pint. <laughs> right. But At still, least let me get a buy a pint. You see what I mean? But I've happened had it before. I had, a, I had a guy that left the trade show with. $250,000 worth of my merchandise and his private plane crashed. Yeah. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna fucking hound his widow for the money? No, right? So, so those are the downsides of wholesale. For trade shows, don't shy away from that dealer business. Because once these dealers, these small time guys that are flipping watches here and there find out that, hey, Nico has some shit, and I can actually buy from him, he's not just a retail operation, you'd be surprised how much that helps. So how many, you, how many sales people will you have behind the case? Three. Three. Every single one of them, their job is to talk to every single individual that walks up, get their name, shake their hand, get their contact information. That email address, that phone number, that person face-to-face, -face, getting to know you and the other guys or girls here, that's very valuable for a retail operation. Dom, what are we gonna do for it? Mm, okay. I'm easy. You, easy? Yeah, I, I like meat. This was Nico's first trade show. So, you know, naturally he was nervous. He wanted to get everything right. This is a public facing trade show, meaning it's open to the retail public, not just a B2B show where you don't really have to be too fancy. So obviously that was a hot topic of conversation. After hours of talking, myself and Chelsea, who was with me, we realized we were really, really hungry. Uh, so we went to a place called the Meat Factory. And of course, we insisted on some proper Irish drinks. back the next day to Nico's office to help him pack up for the show and go to London. Do you not have a big fucking suitcase to put this in? Uh, yeah, he's here. Like, yeah. this is so fucking put a target on your forehead. 
Like no. what? These cases are like, yeah, this is never going to happen again. Simple. It's like a Jerry Maguire moment here. What's happening? Hold on. Give us Jerry Maguire. Right, lads. Uh, easiest thing. Easiest thing to do. Um, getting a bigger taxi, right? I'll get a taxi ordered for you. You guys go straight to uh, International. What you need to say is the private terminal. That's it, private terminal. Yeah? Perfect. So you but you gotta say it as if like this is like an everyday thing for you. Yeah, it's an everyday like, thing. You always fly in private jets. Once we get on the plane, I'm not acting like I belong there. I'm popping a bottle of champagne in the private. Ah. Right. Crack like, but I'll pretend in the car I'll be like private. So how many cars have we taken in total here? Fourteen. This is the pet talk. It's Andrew. We're talking. About no, 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 pet talk. We do that today. Whose job is it to get all the dog hair off of him? <laughs> oh no, he rolls with this and the yogurt stain. Yeah. I'm busting over today. I don't know why. <laughs> I'd, l I'd let you borrow some clothes, but I'm afraid we're different dimensions. Yeah, I'm a bit smaller than you. Yeah. My sweatshirt's too down. <laughs> that is not a sweatshirt, it's a stretch shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're good. Yeah, it's too late. <laughs> My camera would break if it. Drinking water for? You guys, the you're, Irish. You're in Ireland? You're, yeah. Yeah, you're no. Russian, you have no excuse whatsoever. Yeah, but this is not a drink. That's oh, a chaser. I thought it was vodka, it was the. No, vodka. It's, it's, a, it's a common misconception that Russian. We all can drink vodka, but like. I'll give you an idea. Roman always talking about, oh, drink. Oh, oh he's f on water. water. As an you're a pussy. 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 Alright. Vodka, uh, vodka out of a fucking uh, cappuccino. Uh, this yes. just, this, this feels very feminine. Let me, let me do this. Uh, this is fe feels very feminine. So you're acting like it's vodka now. Asshole, this is vodka. I just have a cappuccino cup. Cheers. No, uh, can I use? Water. Can I use your drink for a chaser? Thank you very much. Cheers, boys. Ah, uh, that's water. <coughs> it's a little left, right. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah, let's watch her. This is what you're miss. This is what you're missing, bro. Yeah, I know. I know. It's crazy. Listen, it is what it is. As long as you make it to London, it should be good. It should be good. My COVID exam already expired. I gotta take another one now. Eric, you're a disaster. Alright, so hold on, hold on. So all you need to do is find a place that does a rapid RPC or CPR test or whatever it is. They'll give you the results in one hour. So just go do it just in case. We got a man down. Eric missed his connecting flight in Newark. Missed the flight to Dublin. So we really, really hope that he can make it. Meanwhile, let's go catch our flight. I swear to God, if I hear you say the words, I gotta take a shite on here, I'm giving you a Already, I'm, I'm giving you a pair, I'm giving you a parachute. Eat it! If you guys are hiring, use him, he's just the right height, he can walk up and down the plane. We're wrecking the airplane, we're wrecking the airplane. Whoa, what the is going on here? What the f is going on? Can you please act like you've been on one of these before? Please. <laughs> Hell, the boys wrecking the airplane. Oh, okay, that's fucking it. Fuck it stinks, boy. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. hell. Let's leave this up with you. Did you take a big shake, man? I'm going to be in the front. It was Roman took a big shake. That's stinking. I'm going to smell like some American shake. I'm going to bring mine to London. I'm pure Texas. Do you have some champagne, by the chance? We figured out this, buddy. Do you have some champagne? 
we're sharing the ride like. Oh yeah. I'm gonna finish it though. Oh we wanna yeah, get a picture at the top of it. Like, yeah. Yeah. A very quick but a very fun flight from Belfast to London. I mean, we were on the plane with Nika. I mean, what else is there to say? We did also have another passenger with us, a DJ by the name of Ben Nicky. Awesome guy, awesome DJ. Got to London to the Grosvenor House in Mayfair, beautiful hotel, and Nico decided to have a pep talk for the show for his team. A few important things, guys. We got everything done. Everything is secure, everything is safe, all good. We're a retail company, right? We're a retail company. But we shouldn't say no to a small profit. You don't go broke on making a small profit. I have no idea what to expect. You don't have any idea what to expect. No one has any idea what to expect. Make sure that we sell and move a what at a profit. I want data. Data is key. I want you guys on the floor. We are the example. People are looking at us and not anyone else. So let's be that an example. Robin does all the tricks in the book, right? He's the he's the master in this stuff. You can compliment all you want, but it comes down to simplicity. Don't overcomplicate things. Anytime you're at a trade show, the very first thing that happens is you get this sense of urgency and you, you feel hyped up and you get this anxiety like hurry up hurry up do not hurry up when you hurry up mistakes happen you make a mistake in price misplacing a watch you have to be careful at all times because people will come in and try to steal shit, right number one what he said meeting dealers is extremely extremely important even if you come to the show and you're exposed to 3,000 people that walk through that door and you get a thousand email addresses and contact informations and you don't sell a single watch it's a success you gotta, you gotta have fun great market baby When I walked in, let me tell you something, I was impressed. Big shout out to Charlie who put the show together. Big shout out to Paul Thorpe who got me out there. It wasn't that B2B shows that we're used to. It was fancy for the lack of a better word. But there was a line waiting to talk to me, which was awesome. Hi, how are you? How are you? Hey. Hi, how are you? How are you? How are we looking, boys? I know it's going to be a big turnout, but half that sh will not be going home. Oh my God, is that watch, Eric? Finally. Watch Eric made it. I made it. They're Eric trying to did. find the VIP entrance. I'm like, I'm trying to find the whole show. Where's the little leprechaun? Where is he? Where, where's Nico? Yes. I got my shoe back. What's wrong with you? What the f <laughs> Go take a photo. The boys want to Make sure you cut that because I've seen my f***ing belly. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Are you filming? Of course, I met many other vendors whom I haven't met face to face before. Some guys I've done business with remotely, but I've never seen their face. Uh, Mr. Are you guys at the Trotters? That's right. How are you guys? I talked to the boys from the Trotters on YouTube. I met some guys from the watch room. I also met the guys from Zero West. They sent me a watch in a few months ago that I actually reviewed on What's On My Desk, I believe, or Q&A, one or the other. So this legitimately matches it. Look at that. Perfect. Unbelievable. We only noticed that yesterday. <laughs> yeah. 
David Khalil, who also had some ridiculous factories, said diamond Rolex is some things I've never even seen in my entire 20 career. Okay, so this is the, probably the first and the last time you'll see this watch. Of course, this, that's this what I said. It's not, you don't, you just don't just find it. I did end up doing a couple of deals while I was there in a matter of like 15 minutes, but that was about it. So I would buy this for 3260. This, if you, this is something you want to leave with me to take home, I'll have Nico ship it to me. I'm going to hold on to this. Uh, when I get home, I'll send you a piece of paper that I have this. Yeah. We'll get rid of it. No big deal. Originally, when I got there, I thought I was going to do a little bit of business, walk the shows, try to buy a few things. But honestly, I didn't have the time. I spent majority of my time dedicated to the people that came out to meet myself, watch Eric and Nico. Great content with you. Thank you. Thank you. Every one of them. What's your name? Paul Steventon. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you, man. This is a big deal, all right? It's usually a boys club, Thank but it's a big deal. Oh, it's very refreshing to have a female it. follower, I honestly. It is a good deal, we'll buy it. Since before, before I had a beer. You guys. Now, this young lady has to be on video as well. Number one fan, <laughs> one, of the, one of the younger fans, and one of the very few female fans that we have. So a big shout out to you. Tell them your name. Tia Jackson. Tia Jackson, everybody. This is Hunter, everybody. Hunter is gonna be a big time watch collector. Just keep be careful. Remember, it's a very expensive hobby. Nico, come here. You want to get blocked there, right? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I lost so my voice. No, no idea problem. Why. No idea why. Oh, f off. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many watches did you guys sell today? Oh, that's what we're trying to pull. We're just trying to make it. We're just trying to do the final number. So. Yeah, your team needs to get it together, Nika. Do not hurry up. When you hurry up, mistakes happen. You make a mistake in price. You make a mistake uh, misplacing a watch. You have to be careful at all times. Right, lads. Very easy. Listening carefully, right? Uh, can you call me? Wait, 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 wait. We're okay. Wait. We're doing this. We just needed Three. your number. Can we close Three this? Sold. Because I can't see him. Yeah. Three right. sold. Okay, better. So how many f***ing watches did you sell? Eight. Eight. It would be Eight. really easy if they were okay. You know what? I would have had this worked out. Everybody's f***ed up. <laughs> this is a mix of f***ing Peaky Blinders and Snatch right here. <laughs> this is my first trade show. What the f*** do I know? I need some deodorant. I'm going to the room. I'm going to kick my feet up for an hour. Go, go to the room. I'll brother. see you down here at 8 o'clock, yeah? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> the show ended with a live show. Show ended with a live show. Yeah, that makes sense. Show ended with a live show on stage where all the YouTubers came on. It was streamed live on the London Watch Guys channel. Spencer ran the show. I'll try not to use bad language. Right, fuck. The real Nico, nah, I'm f At the end of the day, I've said it on plenty of my videos, I get to stare at one of those. This show, I got a chance to meet thousands of people, to shake their hands, and to me, that was the biggest part of the show. It's the human aspect, it's to watch people that are out here today that showed up for the love of watches, and that's really it. And then there was a kick-ass after party. Charlie put on a great party after the fact. <laughs> So obviously while at the London Watch Show, and a lot of people send me messages and commenting, oh my God, I, w I wish we could go. So we have a trade show coming up. Uh, it's the New York uh, Watch and Jewelry Show at the Metropolitan Pavilion on October 22nd through the 25th. Consider this an official invitation for you guys to come to New York to the Palm Beach Watch and Jewelry Antique Show is what it's called officially. I'm gonna have all the details posted below in this video. They even gave me a coupon code called the Gray Market. Makes sense, right? So you can go on their website, you can register for tickets ahead of time, use the coupon code, you'll get half off. So you guys can come, buy, sell, ask questions. I am gonna have my team there throughout the weekend so you can meet Nick, Alex, Anna, Adrian, and myself as well if we haven't met already. And last but not least, I decided to invite my friend Adam from Florida. He's gonna fly out with a bunch of kick-ass vintage watches. We'll make it like the Antique Roadshow. You guys can come in there with your watches. Myself, Adam can help you evaluate them. And as always, I have to ask, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you guys next week on Gray Market.